evening. I'd like to call to order the regular monthly meeting of the Scarborough Sanitary District, March 26, 2015. Start with the roll call. Dave Nelson? Here. Charles Anderson? Here. Nick Rico is absent. Ben Viola? Here. Rob McSorley? Present. Seth Garrison? Here. And I am Treasurer Jason Greenleaf. Did I miss anybody? I don't believe I did. Um, Next is the approval of the minutes from the February 26, 2015 investment workshop. Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Second. Motion to second. Any errors or omissions in the minutes? I saw one. Okay. And the last one, item five, adjournment? Yeah. We already caught that one. Are you already <laughs> done? Okay. <laughs> February 26, 2015, regular monthly meeting minutes. Motion to approve. I came in late. Errors or omissions? Question. Charlie, yes. Yeah. Um, on page one, it says Chairman Greenleaf called the meeting to order, and under roll call, it says Chairman Greenleaf was absent. We got that one, too. Okay. So that's been taken care of already? Okay. All right. Uh, Any others? Page three. Wastewater Control Association Legislative Breakfast. Uh, second to the last line, it says, have time with the legislatures to go over their concerns. And I think it's supposed to be legislators. Yep. And that was all I had. Any others? All in favor of approval? I'm going to abstain. Or I was absent. <coughs> the superintendent's report, Dave. Uh, thank you. Um, copy of the monthly report of operations for the month of February is included in your packet. Our average effluent flow for the month was 1.05 million gallons per day. Air flow quality, again, was well within our permitted limits. We averaged 95% uh, biochemical oxygen demand and 98% total su suspended solids removal for the month. Those concentrations were 13 in milligrams per liter and 7 milligrams per liter, respectfully. Copy of the pump station flows for the month of February is included in your packet. No issues were noted. Uh, Rudy Hale is, at, is attending the JETSI Introduction to Wastewater Treatment course, which is a six-session course, which began on March 10th and will end on April 7th. I think he's already attended three of those six courses. Um, actually, and on another note, Jay, um, Kenneth, and myself attended a fats, oil, and grease training seminar that took place down in York on Wednesday, uh, also. Uh, Scarborough Terrace Assisted Living Facility, we recently had a, several plugged pumps at the pump station that services uh, Scarborough Terrace. I met with the executive director at the facility to discuss this issue of the disposable wipes plugging our pumps. She stated that she feels she knew where the wipes were coming based on the timing. She asked me when the, the, the plugging started occurring and would address the, uh, the issue immediately. Um, we had a similar problem back in 2012, and again at that time I met with the executive uh, director, um, and she took – she took action immediately, and we noted uh, an improvement in the, the white problem in the, that pump station immediately at that time. So I, I expect the uh, results will be the same. Uh, polymer pump test. We uh, actually just today, uh, yesterday, we received a um, uh, new polymer pump that we'll be pilot testing both on our, our gravity belt thickener and our, uh, our rotary presses. <coughs> to replace uh, existing aging equipment. Uh, this was something that was budgeted. I've been meeting with uh, Wood and Curran to develop a scope of work for the, our budgeted SCADA upgrades for this year. I anticipate moving forward with this work by the end of the uh, next month. 
I received a proposal to inspect um, about 8,000 linear feet of gravity sewer in the Higgins Beach area uh, uh, via closed caption TV. Uh, the proposed cost is uh, $8,400, and as you may recall, this area had a uh, dramatic increase in flow last year of about 70% based on the pump station pumping volumes. Although this is an unbudgeted expense, uh, we do have the monies to cover this expense under our miscellaneous contractual services. Um, that's a $15,000 line item that I have in that. And so I plan on moving forward with this work because of the dramatic increase that we did see there. I think it, it's important to move forward to try and capture any leaking pipes in that area um, during the spring melt. Uh, finally, our Tier 2 submittal has been completed and has been submitted uh, to the emergency, uh, main emergency management agency uh, with regard to our chem chemical inventory. This uh, inventory is also uh, submitted to our local fire department. To, um, an annual report that we do. And that's it. Thank you, Dave. Uh, questions for the superintendent? Yeah, uh, just a question on the CCTV. The $8,400, was that broken down into a linear foot cost and a mold charge, or was that just a single price to do that, that job? Uh, it was just a single price to do the job. Okay, and are you planning on... Um, Doing NASCO PACP on yes. all the pipes yes. that you're going to do? Yeah. Okay, good. Other questions? Charlie? Uh, just on that same topic, um, uh, is Eastern Pipe Service still doing uh, closed circuit TV inspections? They, have a, they had a Portland number. Their offices were actually out of Concord, but they had, they had given very, very competitive prices in, in past years, so I don't know if you touch base with them. I'll do that. I'll check, check in with him. And uh, and he has, uh, Dave Williams has done a lot of work with the sanitary district in years past. Okay. Um, and the other question I had was um, regarding the power failure today, how widespread was that down Black Point Road to, um, with regard to the electrical outages? Do you, do you know how that has affected us yet, Dave? Or not? I do not. Other questions? Uh, just one other follow. So this is Ted Berry. That's oh, Ted Berry. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Supposed to come back around. I did have a question regarding uh, the situation at Scarborough Terrace. It's only been a couple of years. Uh, they've been fantastic at their response, mm -hmm. and both instances, or in the past and recently. Do we have a next step with them? Have Have you communicated with the director as to circumstances? You know this. <laughs> seems like we have to continue to go back and put reminders. I know they've done things in the past. Yep. Um, signs and they, so they certainly have uh, all the signage out. Um, I did notice that when I was at the facility, um, directing people not to flush the wipes. Um, she insists that they do education of the staff. And I do th know this is a, a common problem for all these facilities. It's not necessarily the staff, but the family members visiting there their loved ones that um, tend to be the the, uh, the cause of the flushing of the wipes. Okay. And so that and that was the case in this case here. They they had a new tenant uh, resident move in and um, right and it lined up right with the timing of the the problem. So she was going to go uh, meet with the family members. Okay. Yes, Rob. Follow up on that. What was the, the result? Did we have to go out in the middle of the night or? We actually had three plugs um, over a uh, month and a half period of time. Two occurred during the day that we addressed during the day, and one, one occurred at night where we, we get a call out. When we get a call out like that, the operator will go down, he'll check out the situation, and um, he'll just isolate the pump and um, we can fix it. How much of an question. expense did we incur? Two hour call out time frame. Two hours total? To, no, for the, uh, yeah, for all three incidents. In, we've made them aware in the past that they would be responsible yep. for that. Yep. What are we planning? Are we planning to uh, bill them or not? At this time, I wasn't planning on billing them because they've been so cooperative. If the issue does continue, I was uh, planning on sending them a bill for any additional expenses. Okay. Thank you, David. There's no other question.
questions, we'll move on to correspondence. The first is main DEP inspection report. Uh, we received a copy of the DEP inspection report from uh, the inspection that took place on February 4th, 2015. As noted in his report, Matt wrote, operation and maintenance at, the facility, at, at this facility and, and staff are continually improving operations. Um, he was very pleased with uh, the, the overall, uh, his overall inspection. He also noted that he will be returning in the spring to conduct an inspection to determine if a stormwater permit is required or not. Prior to that meeting, I will be meeting with uh, Verdant Water to review our operations in that regard um, to get prepared for that meeting. Any questions on that, Rob? Uh, is this a multi-sector permit that he's referring to? I do not know. It was very vague. The MSGP? Pardon? The MSGP? Yeah, I believe permit. so. Other questions, we'll move on to item B under correspondence, Burnham Village LLC. Burnham Village LLC is proposing a 32-unit expansion of their apartment complex located off of North Street. On their behalf, the Bago Technics requested a letter from the district with regards to the district's ability to serve the proposed expansion. I did provide the requested documentation and noted that the 32 unit units would be subject to our capacity reserve fee. In a separate letter, Harold Burnham II requested district consideration for a reduced capacity reserve fee based on a single family apartment. Any questions on that item? Well, move on to, oh, oh, I'm sorry. You did have a question, Rob. I, I was waiting to see. I have a uh, parent conflict of interest because my firm uh, does work for this gentleman, so any further discussion? Just a comment, uh, and I think it's consistent with the superintendent's recommendation, is that if, if we were to go forward with any response uh, to this request, it would require us to uh, completely reevaluate how we charge how we charge these fees and how uh, water consumption estimates are put together for the particular uh, operations. I'd have to see financial statements for the project and how the how the rental rates are guaranteed to the tenants and how any reductions that we might grant uh, would be guaranteed to be passed on to developing users. I mean, there's a lot of we've typically stayed away from these kind of social fringe social kind of issues and let the town uh, try to deal with those directly. So I'm not close-minded about it, but there's really a lot of detail that we have to think about and pursue if, if, uh, if we're going to respond uh, to this request. And they haven't given us any documentation on what they estimate water consumption to be, what the, what the net change in fees would be. I really wouldn't, wouldn't want to undertake something of this scale if it's not going to make a material difference in their fee. He's, he's saying it's $38 a month. Monthly uh, rent, and uh, you know if if it's a net savings of fourteen bucks or something like that, I don't know that that's material enough to even to be seriously concerned about. But I think all those kinds of issues would need to be presented to us <coughs> for us to really uh, take this seriously. Thank you. Thanks, Shirley. <coughs> Any other comments on that? Next item is old business. We have none. New business. Item A is Moorbrook Farm Agricultural Product Store. On behalf of uh, Marion and Stuart Harmon, Northeast Civil Solutions has requested district approval to connect and discharge into the sewer the wastewater from an agricultural store with an ice cream stand. I recommend approval with the following conditions. The approved average daily wastewater flow is 200 gallons per day. Any future flows in excess of the approved amounts are subject to additional approvals. No capacity fees, reserve fees are due. Uh, the project is within the original sewer service area. This lot has an allocation of four residential dwelling units. At 200 gallons per day, this proposal will use only one of the four allocations. Consequently, the proposal is not subject to capacity reserve fee. 
Any additional flow in excess of the approved is subject to additional approvals. Uh, the sewer service shall have detectable underground utility marking tape placed approximately three feet below grade, directly above the pipe, and tracing wire placed on the pipe. Final plan signed and stamped by a licensed professional engineer subject to this, uh, submitted to the superintendent for approval. Prior to issuance of the permits, uh, the sewer permit is required. A complete application and so to see shall, shall be submitted to the district at the time the permit is executed. Prior to the permit being executed, no site sewer work shall be completed. And a complete application and associated fee shall be submitted to the district for the grease interceptor permit application. Um, and finally, as built brick, a CAD drawings, a stamped PDF of the CAD drawing, and a stamped paper copy to be submitted to the district upon completion of the project. Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman, with the caveats attached. Second. Any questions, concerns? Rob. Uh, David, they have shown a test tee at the property line. Mm -hmm. uh, we typically require a manhole at that location. Do you have a manhole on site? It looks like an easy, you know, they could put a fitting there uh, for the connection of their domestic sewer versus their grease sewer and move that manhole out to the property line. Yep. Um, typically, well, well, we usually have a, we do have a sampling manhole in this case here at, at, um, at, at one location. Uh, we do require a test T. Um, at the property line to test the sewer service from the from the property line property line up to the structure for integrity. Um, we can do that with a manhole, so we, that's something we certainly could just move and, and uh, utilize that that structure there. And that's a good point. Well, yeah. Anything else, Charlie? Did you? Have uh, I have an aside. Okay. That I'll offer. It's not. That's not an issue with regard to sewer, however. Okay. Did you want to go ahead with that, or uh, I'll talk to David after. Okay. Gotcha. Yes. <clears throat> They're calling out on the detail sheet a, a four-inch yeah, service, I cut, and it's I a cut that. It's oh, six-inch six inch inch plans. Yep. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if there's nothing else, all in favor of approval? Not opposed. Next item under a new business is 2014 annual audit and annual report. Um, well, let associates uh, have completed the 2014 annual audit of the district, district financial statement, a copy of which is included in your uh, packet. Um, as part of that is our annual report that I included uh, with the, uh, that's bound in with that report. Uh, no significant issues or findings were identified. Mike Dunn from Willett Associates is here to make a presentation with regard to the, the audit, and I recommend approval. We get the presentation. So moved. Would you like the presentation before I entertain a motion? <laughs> yes, please. Okay. <laughs> All right, Mike, take it away. All right. Well, uh, thank you again, trustees, for having me present the financials. Um, I've also provided for the meeting uh, just a copy of these slides I put together. Um, they, they offer some trends to, to go along with the financials as you're reviewing them. Um, also, hopefully everybody has the, the letter that was sent to the board, um, which is a required communication where we need to make. Um, so, in, in, so in conjunction with my presentation, we can look at both the financials and the, and the letter. Uh, first, though, just to give everybody a, an update of what you know our purpose of our audit is, is, is certainly to provide an opinion on the financials. We're an independent CPA firm that, that comes in and reviews and performs audit procedures on on management's financial statements, and and what and then we place our opinion on that. And one what, what of the the primary goal of that is to provide assurance to anyone else reading financials um, that they are fairly stated. It also provides assurance to the trustees of some of the, some of the financial information you're receiving on a monthly basis. Um, a couple other goals of our audit is, is, is while we're in there, we're uh, reviewing internal controls. Um, if we find that um, there are ways to improve 
improve the internal controls uh, over finance and reporting, we will make some recommendations. Um, and as David has stated, we didn't, we didn't have any recommendations at this point on the internal controls. We found them sound. So the, the third area is, is providing technical assistance on new accounting standards. Um, it, on occasion, um, the Government Accounting Standards Board, which is uh, you know, the gap of what is followed and to put together your financials, they issue new standards of how to record and report financial inf information. Um, there were a, a couple new standards that were issued this year, uh, GASB 67 and GASB 68, deals with multiple, multiple employer uh, pension plans. The district does not have any of those, so at this point we did not elect to, uh, to adopt those new accounting standards. So these, these new accounting standards don't have any effect. Um, the trustees, as, you're, as you look at maybe other financial statements, maybe with the town of Scarborough, multi-employer pension plan would be main peers. So any of the district, any other districts or, or government entities that have or involved with main peers are probably adopting this and you're going to see changes on their financials. But the, um, the Scarborough district doesn't, doesn't, fall, doesn't belong to main peers. They have their individual pension plan, so that's why this standard doesn't, doesn't um, apply, wasn't adopted. The first thing I'd like to go over is the letter. And I've summarized it on this one slide. <coughs> it basically uh, provides trustees with the result of the audit. Um, and, and most of the areas we're required to communicate are, are bolded throughout this letter. And I've, again, including them up there. First area under qualitative aspects of accounting practices, the first paragraph deals with the new accounting policies. And, and if the district did have one that they adopted to follow to follow the GASB standards, we would like to make sure we communicate that to the Board of Trustees. So that, that would notify you that there's changes in how things are recorded and reported. Um, this letter basically states that there was none during the audit. A couple other areas. Um, significant estimates, significant disclosures. Um, the, the financial statements do contain significant estimates and disclosures. Well, not really significant disclosures, but definitely a significant estimate, which is de depreciation. Um, that's an estimate based on uh, made by management on the life of the assets when they're purchased and, and how they're expensed over over that period of the life. So that's an estimate. It's an expense that's in the financials that you should be aware of. That's that's a non-cash expense. The item was already purchased. It's now being expensed over over a period of time. Um, we didn't have any significant disclosures. The disclosures are consistent with prior years, um, and they, they meet the standards. Uh, they basically outline um, some of the significant areas of the financial and provides more detail on them. So it, it also, um, the disclosures have uh, significant accounting policies of the district. Um, none of those disclosures changed during the year, so we didn't find any that were considered significant. These other areas on page two, um, talking about if we had difficulties performing the audit, if there were misstatements or findings we had that were un that management elected not to correct, um, if we had any other types of disagreements or, or other audit findings or issues, this is the letter that we would use to communicate those, and we had we had none of those. Um, actually, the, the audit went, went extremely smooth, considering Wendy's first first go at it, I guess you could say. Um, she was well prepared, and she actually provided us a lot of information before we were in the, even in the field. So um, it was a good job on Wendy's part. Any questions on this letter? So moving into the financials. Again, the financials are consistent with the prior year. They're a comparative format, so you have two years, uh, uh, December of 2014 and December 31st, 2013. Uh, the first couple pages um, is the auditor's report, which is our opinion letter. And we have, again, issued an unmodified opinion, um, which is a clean opinion on the district's financials. The next, the next number of pages are the management's discussion and analysis. 
management has looked at the summarized financial information and has made comments and highlights um, of some of the activities that occurred during the year. Uh, the financial statements, those are again consistent. The statement of position, that's the assets and liabilities of, of the district as of December 31st, 2014 and 13. Statements of revenue expenses and changes in that position, that's the revenue and expenses for the year. There's a statement of cash flows, and then behind those, those required statements are the notes, which again um, include information to explain some of these significant areas in a little bit more detail. Uh, the statement of revenue expenses and changes in that position, the expenses are, are presented in a function-based format. Um, so management has included a schedule of operating expenses after the notes, which, which breaks down the expenses of those functional areas and natural expense categories, things like wages and utilities and, and those types of items. Behind that is the superintendent's report. First, on page 10 of the financial, this is going to be the statement for net position, the assets and liabilities, and I put together a few slides um, to show a five-year trend of the district. Just looking at the asset portion of this of this statement, which is the top half. The only item that I didn't include in this slide was capital assets. It would have skewed this graph. So everything would have been real tiny, so I pulled that out to put it into a separate slide. But you can see there's some, some very good growth um, in the assets of the district. Uh, we've got it listed as investments. Those are really the, the district's reserves that they, they've set aside and designated for particular purposes. Um, you can see some of the more um, assets that, that are um, involved with the operations, such as the accounts receivable, the inventory other assets. Those are all fairly consistent from year to year, which is expected as, as based on the, the nature of a, of, a, of a sewer district and how it operates. You, you're going to expect those to be fairly consistent. You can see in 2013 and 2014, the receivables have jumped slightly. Um, that, was, that was due to the rate change that occurred. Um, so that was expected as well. Um, and there has been a fluctuation in cash. 2011, 2010, 2011 is when you um, constructed a pump station. Most of the in investments were removed at that point, brought into liquid cash as part of the construction, and then they were basically reinvested into uh, the current money market funds that they're in. That's what the swing in cash during that period. But you can even see the growth in cash that's occurring be between 12, 13, and 14. Again, some of that is is due to the rate. Questions on that? Moving, uh, taking a look at the capital assets, um, you can see a decrease in these. Again, the district over the past five years hasn't really made a lot of capital asset purchases. They've made some some smaller ones, considering the size of your capital assets. Uh, they made necessary ones each year, but for the most part, what you're seeing is the depreciation. Um, this year was about 1.6 million. It's going to be about that amount every year. That's how. That's why you're seeing that dispensing <coughs> of those purchases over um, certain periods of time. Good question. Sure. A vehicle included in that capital yep. asset. Okay. So what are the up top of the other assets? What would that? What would be under that category? Um, in the top table, not on this one. The table before. The previous chart. Oh, it would be things like prepaid expenses. Um, I don't think there was there was very many. No, there weren't. But I mean, it's it's a very 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 small bump. There's, I think the one you see in the middle. I don't have a pointer, but oh maybe I do. Thousand twelve. Okay, this one right here. This is cash. I know the the shades are a little off. Your other assets are down here, um, which is primarily prepaid. Is that what you're referring to? Yeah. Yeah, that's prepaid expenses. Um, <coughs> Is, is primarily what's in there. Okay. I have a 
quick question going back. Uh, with your other uh, municipal and you know, the, uh, the other graphic, the next one after this, with your other uh, quasi-municipal and municipal employees, what percentage of uh, capital asset renewal are they funding generally out of bonded debt versus out of uh, internal cash? I'm sure, or is it all over the place? It's all over the place. I, I mean, I don't think there's a, a percentage per se, but um, I think what I see most, um, you know, most districts do is they come up with a plan and they try to follow that plan, a 10-year plan, or, or they try to um, fund a percentage of the depreciation that's being taken. So um, the, the tricky part with a district, um, whether it's a water district or a sewer district, is you have a large portion of your capital assets that are underground. Uh, so, and they're being depreciated over a long period of time. Um, so it's, it's, hard, it's hard to really, um, you know, and that's kind of where the, a 10-year plan would come in because they would choose to either do stri certain streets and replace those assets um, way before they're fully depreciated. Um, you know, the, the normal assets you see around the district, the, the vehicles or the equipment, that's really a very small portion of what, what's there. And, and so you kind of look at what I see is, is the immediate needs or, or short-term needs of the smaller assets like vehicles and, and equipment. And long-term long -term needs are more of a, a plan, 10-year plan type, um, you know, deal with, with, with those certain replacing streets or, or pump stations in your case. I guess what I'm getting at is we use straight line depreciation yes, method for all of those yep. and like a 40 year or 60 year for linear assets, something like that. So I'm just, I'm curious about, you know, what you've seen with other folks as far as how much of, um, how much of their asset value do they let degrade over time to use that depreciation to fund operating uh, versus funding additional capital. Um, I don't know if I can answer that question. I mean, we don't, I, I, I think, in the, again, the, what I see is I don't see them taking a percentage of the depreciation to determine how much they're going to fund capital. I don't see that a lot in the districts that I do. Um, it's, it's primarily looking at um, both ends of, of the structure, the, the long-term term portions and the short-term. So simply need-based based on their CIP. That, that's usually the smaller assets is need-based. Charlie? Yeah, my, I guess my, my comment on that would be uh, that, that user rates usually drive the limitations as to what different districts actually go ahead and fund out of right. annual user fees to set monies aside. The district has historically been very aggressive in setting monies aside. Um, in order to control rate increases, we have allowed our um, reserve funds for capital depreciation to, d to diminish. And, uh, and again, I think that's been part of our <coughs> strategy in dealing with our financial uh, circumstance um, until this uh, bond is retired in 2018. And then I think it's been our intention to uh, use those payments that have been going to pay the bonded indebtedness to rebuild that capital reserve fund for um, um, depreciation. So, um, yeah, I think we're in a pretty good position. I mean, it seems like we still have a fair amount to depreciate on our existing assets compared to other utilities I've seen that, you know, have less than 10% of their remaining depreciated value. But I think, I think, yeah. Well, in, you know, your, in your operations are fairly new, per se. I mean, exactly. it's only 10 years ago when that came online. So, um, you know, that's, that's fairly new compared to a lot of districts. Uh, we have a lot of miles of sewer that are 40 years old, you know. So yeah. I think there'll be uh, issues. We may identify examples. So it would be the TV inspections at the Higgins Beach system there. They may turn up capital-type projects that, you know, could be necessary. And that's another thing that I've been seeing too is that um, a lot of times with the, with the older assets that are in the ground, a lot of times you, they, the districts don't don't dictate when those get replaced. It's usually in conjunction with another project going on, mm -hmm. a road system, a bridge, or something like that, and then they are forced to 
jump in and, and make those those repairs or, or replacements at that point. Yeah, I guess uh, my, my commentary is we, we have a lot of, uh, we're in a fairly good position compared to a lot of other utilities where we don't have a lot of heavy capital needs, but yet we have a healthy amount of depreciation available to us and, you know, a good cash and asset reserve. So, very unique position compared to a lot of uh, sanitary districts across the state. Taking a look at the liabilities and uh, good friends here as well, the district received a, a credit on one of its bonds back and that's being amortized over the remaining life of that bond. You can see that's dropping off fairly quickly. Um, also the interest, crude interest is, is decreasing as it should based on the amortization of the note. The other areas uh, that again that more uh, deal with the operations of the districts, the accounts payable, the accrued payroll, um, those are, are fairly consistent from year to year which is expected. There's been some jumps in the payroll as, as some accrued salaries have been on the books for, for individuals that are retiring. Um, and those, those expenses are, are within a year, year's term, so they've been accrued. Um, other than that, it's fairly consistent um, and, and in a good trend overall, most of your liabilities. You can see on this next slide um, that, you know, when you put in the current ratio, um, comparing your current assets to your current liabilities and, and again you see a good growth in your ratio. This includes this includes the reserve funds that, that are that are part of the current assets. So um, but they're designated the board could use those at any at any time at any point. Uh, but four four point three to one is a real good ratio uh, in the in the current term, especially considering that Part of that current liability is your, your debt service um, for, the, for the following year. Um, so, you know, covering your assets four times over is a, is a good position. Uh, I did insert another slide this year that pulls out those reserve funds. Um, the district is still at a 1.8 to 1 even without the reserve funds. So I think, again, it's a, it's a fairly good position considering it's concluding the debt service. Uh, the overall net position you can see is primarily made up of capital assets. There's only a small portion. Um, you know, even though the, the reserve funds are just over $2 million um, compared to what's been invested, most of the equity in the, uh, the district is in the, the capital assets. This is net of, of the bonds, the debt that's associated with those assets. Um, and, and, uh, Similar size amount is unrestricted. That's what's, uh, that's what's available after those liabilities, um, current liabilities can get off. This, this is a similar similar structure with most districts. So the restricted, there is no restricted, no restricted funds. No. Sometimes, uh, sometimes districts when they when they get into bonding, they get into certain debt. Um, you'll have a you'll have a financial institution that will restrict a certain amount of money for debt service and, and make you set, it, set that aside. You don't have any restrictions like that on your bonds, so um, no restrictions. We have uh, a board designated though, right? So that's what we do keep on hand for that same purpose. Mm -hmm. So restricted an example would be having a year's worth of bond payments in the allocated account. I've seen some districts that, you know, with, with this size, um, you know, bonding around the $4 million, they're required to hold, hold right around a $1 million set aside in a, in a fund that that the that financial institution is connected to. And it's usually, not usually with bonding per se so much, but with more of, uh, you know, private, private debt or notes associated with institutions, which is used sometimes for short-term borrowing or even small projects. Moving to the next page, page 11, you can see some of the, the trends with the uh, statement of revenue and expenses. I, I put the user fee trends up there. Um, it's been fairly consistent with the consumption. 
perception that you've had a rate increase, which has is, is bumped it up, but there's actually been even some, some growth between 2013 and 2014. So um, and we're going to see in a couple slides later some of the cash flow activity associated with these user fees. These are your other, other revenues, and you can see these aren't as consistent. Um, they're small dollar amounts, but, uh, you know, the, there's been some little bit of growth in the, in the permanent, permanent area, and uh, your septic is a little, is a little uh, non, non consistent, I guess I would say. But they're all right around the same amounts. Again, this, these amounts aren't, aren't very material to the, to the financial statements, but they are other sources. Starting out with your operating expenses, uh, there was a, there was actually a decrease this year in operating expenses by about 55,000, or about a 2.7% decrease. And looking at your revenues, there was actually a, almost a 10% increase there. Those those increased about 288. Together, you've got an increase in cash flow for your operating activities from 2014 of about 314,000. Um, that was a that's a real good trend. The last couple of years that has been growing. The uh, the net result, looking at those cash flows, and I'm just comparing it to the financing. Is is this year's uh, overall cash flow of 1.2 million compared to just your debt service of 908,000? That's that's interest in principal for the prior year. Um, you're over 325,000 over that, so that's the type of that's the type of um, income from operations that has basically helped out and, and is primarily the biggest part of your change in cash. Uh, the statement of revenues and expenses actually shows a loss, and you, that loss is primarily generated from the depreciation, which is non-cash. So you actually have growth in cash both in your reserve funds from the capacity upgrade fees and also from operations in your normal cash. So, again, very good trends. Um, the district is sitting pretty well at the end of 14. I don't know if you had a chance to look at the financials and if you had any overall questions in the notes. Some of the notes that are in there are a little bit, there's some detail of the capital assets. Those are on page 16. Again, some detail of the, the financing and the bonds and, and the five-year maturity. Those are on page 17. Fairly consistent to the prior year. An idea how the changes, and again, there's not a lot of purchases in the capital assets from year to year. I guess I'll make another quick comment just on our rate structure. Um, you know, from the other districts I've seen, uh, we're benefiting by having a, a fixed rate structure like we do instead of a volumetric-based program. So a lot of the other utilities are seeing decreases in their flows, which is translating into decreases in operating revenue. Um, so ours has been very stable because of that uh, rate structure, which is good. Comments or questions for Mike? No, I'm <coughs> pleased with a great report. Thank very you very good. much, Thank Mike, you. for coming in. Thank you for your firm as well. And Thank you again for everything that you do. Thank so you very much. Staff treated you right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. I'll make sure. Kept us straight in the line. <laughs> All right. Thank you again, Mike. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. So, I guess now uh, we've had Mike's presentation. I'd entertain a motion for approval. So moved. Second. Additional questions? Mr. Chairman, um, just procedurally, we generally um, accept the auditor's report and the superintendent's annual report together, consisting our uh, charter required uh, annual report. Okay. So, amend the motion. motion.
include that. Thank you. We have an Split amended motion. On that one, Charlie. Thank you. You don't miss one. Do we have a second to that amended motion? Second to the amended. <laughs> Wasn't Dave going to give us a presentation on that? Page 21 of the uh, of the bonded report is a um, is the annual report that I put together. Um, I, I touch on some of the the specifics of who we have served, uh, who we have added to the the system um, throughout the year, and I'll just I'll just walk through it. Um, we're currently uh, providing. Uh, uh, collection and treatment for about uh, 5,000 accounts, uh, which is an increase of 39 accounts uh, from uh, last year. Um, and let's see, uh, this past year we issued a total of uh, 103 sewer permits. Um, most of them were for 60 uh, single family homes, a total of 61 of them were for single family homes. Um, and the remainder, uh, the, we had um, another 21 that really were either a demolition or a repair or replacement. So it, um, typically the demolition and repair or replacement were, were the same structure. So they weren't additions to, the, uh, to our accounts. Um, and then we had uh, several um, single family units with accessory units or um, duplexes. And then uh, we also had eight sewer extensions this past year uh, that were um, approved. Of the eight sewer uh, extensions, uh, that's going to add uh, approximately 10,000 uh, uh, feet of gravity sewer, another 3,000 feet of force main. 60 manholes and the potential of adding up to 170 connections, sewer connections. Um, as of uh, 2014, we operate about 68 miles of gravity sewer, another 23 miles of force main, and over 2,000 manholes, uh, 23 pump stations, plus our treatment plant, which is rated at about 2.5 million gallons per day. Um, we employ 13 full-time employees. Um, let's see. Um, this, our office manager retired this past year, Sandy Kempton, and in 2013 we hired uh, Wendy, uh, uh, who's sitting here tonight, um, to work alongside with Sandy prior to her retirement to ease the transition uh, as much as uh, possible. And then when uh, Sandy did finally retire, we we um, we hired our new clerk to replace the clerk that uh, had re retired prior to uh, when we hired uh, Wendy. Um, in 2014, we came in slightly under budget. Uh, we are uh, we expended three million seventy-eight thousand three hundred seventy-one thousand versus our budget, which which was uh, approximately three point two million dollars. Um, our 2015 budget reflects a total increase to four capital expenditures of, uh, of $72,000, uh, which translates to uh, about a 2.4% increase. Uh, the total budget, including capital expenditures, uh, is up $238,000 or um, up approximately 7.4%. Uh, we have a couple of several large capital items this year that we're purchasing uh, several trucks, uh, which makes up that increase. Uh, the uh, treatment plant this past year treated on average 1.4 uh, million gallons per day. Overall, we treated uh, 501 million gallons throughout the year. Uh, this is actually a significant increase uh, from uh, uh, prior years. Uh, in 2013, we treated 429 million gallons, and, uh, which was consistent in um, 2012. 
Even with that significant increase, uh, we, we, on average, we moved 95%, 96% of um, BOD and total suspended solids throughout the year. Um, we, we believe the increase in flow this past year is due to inflow into the system. Uh, as a result, we're, we're uh, doing some targeting investigations in some uh, sewer collection systems. Specifically, the first target is going to be the Higgins Beach area. Um, let's see. Uh, septage, uh, we received uh, 480,000 gallons of septage this year, uh, which is a slight decrease from um, prior years, but um, nothing out of the ordinary. Um, let's see. Uh, sludge, uh, we, we compost our sludge uh, in, in to a beneficial, for beneficial reuse, and uh, over the, uh, we uh, generated a total of uh, 2,077 um, cubic yards of compost this year. This is actually a fairly de significant decrease over prior years. Uh, the, the primary reason for that is some improved process improvements that have been implemented over the last couple of years, which has resulted in, number one, a reduction in the amount of sludge that we produce, and number two, a sludge that is, uh, uh, dewaters much uh, more consistently into a higher uh, solids concentration. Consequently, we, we generate less compost. Um, in you know, over the last couple of years, we have uh, done, uh, we have implemented several improvements at the plant, uh, primarily focusing on the aeration system uh, for the treatment of the wastewater including the addition of dissolved oxygen probes to uh, monitor and, and uh, control the amount of oxygen that is being transferred into the, the wastewater. We've added some electric, electric actuators to better um, regulate where that air is going, and uh, we've done some, some significant uh, program changes to our SCADA system to help better manage that system. As a result of that, um, during the, uh, prior to me uh, just getting here during the summer times, we have 350 horsepower blowers that, that um, provide uh, air to our aeration system. It was not uncommon during the summer um, when I first arrived for 250 horsepower blowers to be operating during the summer at 100% at, uh, uh, capacity. Uh, Right now, in the summertime, it's very rare that a second blower even comes on. So uh, a lot of the improvements are really starting to, to, to show up in how the operation is um, uh, running. And that's that. Um, one of the things that we're, we're looking at doing is uh, in the coming years is uh, to provide some supplemental mixing in the aeration systems, again, to help improve the operation. Uh, we've, in, we've added uh, magnesium hydroxide into the, uh, into the system, and that's one of the process improvements that really has helped uh, the overall biological process to the, the, um, to the facility. Uh, we continue to trust T uh, pilot test various types of equipment to see if we can further improve operations, fine tune it, and um, when we have equipment that needs to be replaced, we want to make sure we're getting the uh, right equipment that that meets our needs. So it, it you know it's not uncommon for us to test something and if it doesn't work out, we, we send it back. Um, so and and move on to something else. Um, you know, with that, I I. I kind of a brief summary of the report. Um, it wasn't too disjointed. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Dave. Uh, we have an amended motion. A second. Charlie, did you have a question? Can you put your hand up? No, I just wanted to compliment the superintendent and the staff for uh, what is reflected in this report and the progress they continue to make every year to increase operational efficiencies. Um, and uh, compliment the superintendent for working effectively in his relationships with trustees to advise us on policy and to implement the policies that we uh, that we do uh, move forward with. So uh, I think it was a great year in 2014. I think we're off to a good start in 2015, and I just want to say thank you to the superintendent and to our staff members. Thank you, Charlie. Thanks, Charlie. So with that, we have an amended motion and a second. All in favor of approval of the 
I have twice my notes, but I have included in your packet a copy of the two month uh, budget summary. I recommend approval. Thank you. Motion to approve, Mr. Okay. Chairman. Second. <coughs> Second. Any questions on the budget summary? Yes, Rob. We're done with uh, pump station 11, right? Yes. I think we can take that off the report. No other issues, right? Hmm? No other issues down there, right? Not today. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's subject to change. Yeah. <laughs> Day's not over. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all in favor of approval of the two month budget grant. Not opposed. All right, that brings us to public comments. Uh, we do have one member of the public remaining. Mike, any comments tonight? Thanks again for your presentation. Trustee comments, I'll start to my right with Charlie. Uh, no, I think I made all the comments I need to make. I think everybody's doing a great job, and I think the reports tonight reflect that the district's in a solid position, and uh, obviously from year to year, we're all thrilled to hear that information. So I guess we've got to keep doing what we've been doing. Charlie Rump? Uh, staff, uh, I want to congratulate them once again on a great audit. A good report, uh, David, in there, and uh, continues the good work. I'd also like to congratulate Mrs. McSorley on her anniversary. <laughs> the fact that I've survived this long. And uh, everybody have a happy April Fool's Day. <laughs> These are the comments, and thank you to the staff. It's doing a wonderful job. We see that about every week when we're down there. Thank you. Thanks, Seth. Yeah, I would just like to encourage uh, members of the public to, to ha have an interest to look at our financial statements and look at the productivity numbers. Uh, I think you're going to find really favorable um, cost per gallon of treatment, a very good staff to budget ratio, uh, some really impressive numbers in the audit. So thank you, Dave, to you and all your crew. Could, could I add to that to invite them if they ever, anyone ever wants a tour of the facility or facilities, um, they're more than welcome to come down, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy to provide any type of tour. Great. I'm all set. Thank you. All set. All right, just a few comments myself. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much to the staff, especially Wendy, in preparation for the audit. Um, apologies for myself for missing uh, the last two meetings, unfortunately. Uh, my work had taken me away and out of state and was unable to get back for the last meeting. So thanks to Ben for taking the reins and, no and uh, holding down the fort here. Um, also wanted to congratulate uh, all of the Scarborough sports teams who made the playoffs this year and uh, represented the town very well. And uh, special congratulations out to the uh, state championship hockey team, uh, the second state championship in the town, first in Class A, but uh, the 20 year anniversary of the last state championship, which I was a part of. So, congratulations to the team, and uh, I was at the game. It was fantastic. Great job, gentlemen. And uh, with that, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Seconded. In favor of adjournment.